Evergreen conifer trees are interesting to look at in the landscape. Their leaves give them an interesting or unique texture that is different than a lot of our deciduous trees. So it's always nice to have a few in the landscape just for some diversity and that, that different look. Well, the word conifer means cone bearing and it refers to the fact that these plants don't have flowers, they have cones and they belong to a group of plants known as the gymnosperms. And right here on the table, I've got a collection of leaves of different conifer trees, some leaves and cones, some pines, some spruce, some atlas cedar, Arizona cypress, eastern red cedar, which is really a juniper, and an arborvita right back here. Now, when we think about the cones of conifers, everyone is probably most familiar with the female pine cone. This is what it looks like right here. But this cone is from this Austrian pine, and right down in here we see some of the male cones. So these are the female cones, that's the male pollen cone, and those are actually left over from last year, kind of hanging loose there in the branch. But those male pollen cones will release pollen, and I've got a cone of a blue atlas cedar right over here. This is also a male pollen cone, and you can see all that yellow pollen there being released from that male pollen cone of the blue atlas cedar. The female cones don't always look like this. They start out sort of closed up, like we've got this one right here. You can see the, uh, the cone scales are, are all tightly compressed, but once it gets pollinated, from the male pollen cone, the seeds will develop inside there, and then when those seeds are mature, the cone will open up, and these, these scales will split open like this, and you can actually see some pine seeds, little winged seeds, down inside there. They just sort of sit on the, uh, the top of those, those pine scales, but you see those little winged, winged pine seeds inside this female cone, but once they're opened up, uh, those will be released. And there you can see that little, little seed. There are some species of pines that the cones don't open up until they're burned by a forest fire. The lodgepole pine is an example of a cone that has to be opened by fire. Another example of some of the cones opening up are with the Arizona cypress here, you can see the, uh, the unopened cones. You can sort of see those, those suture lines there, those little section lines. And then you can see here, once the seeds inside are mature, the cone just opens up and releases those seeds. Now, if you're familiar with the eastern red cedar, you'll know that their cones look more like berries. And we've got a, a branch right here of our eastern red cedar, our native evergreen conifer, and you can see that uh, all of its cones do look like berries. If you look very close, you can kind of see some little little suture lines, and those pretty much behave the same way. Once they dry out, they will split open and release, release a number of seeds inside. Right down here, we've got a couple of the eastern red cedar seeds that came out of those small cones. They'll have two or three seeds inside those little berry-like cones. Now, in January and February, it's not uncommon to see the wind blow and the male pollen cones of the eastern red cedar releasing their pollen. We see these yellow clouds sort of blowing by, and uh, those will be mature and releasing their pollen very soon. But you can see the tiny size of the, uh, the male pollen cones on the eastern red cedar. And right over here I've got, I'll try to demonstrate with my glove here, some of the pollen from this arborvita. As you bump it, some of that yellow pollen will fall out. But uh, just a few tiny, tiny specks falling out there. But uh, again, another tree that uh, sometimes when the wind blows, you see that, that, that yellow pollen blowing by. The leaves of conifers are one of two types. They can either be needle-like, like we have with the pines and the, uh, the spruce, with those needle-like leaves, also with the, uh, the blue atlas cedar, thin 
sharp pointed needle-like leaves on those plants. So they can be needle-like and they, all, they can also be scale-like with the uh, Arizona cypress here. Actually doesn't even look like leaves, almost just looks like the, uh, the end of the branch here, but they sort of overlap, sort of like the uh, scales of a fish or maybe a snake. The eastern red cedar also has has the, uh, the leaves, scale-like leaves, where they sort of overlap. And they also have a little bit of a sharp point on the end of the eastern red cedar or juniper, juniper foliage. The leaves of the conifers are shaped or arranged in a way to help the plant survive tough conditions uh, such as drought. There are also a lot of conifers that grow up in the mountains where it's cold and they can be frozen for weeks or months on end, but the, uh, the size and the shape of, these, of the leaves enable them to survive these tough environmental conditions. They're small, they don't release, they don't transpire a lot of uh, water. The stomates or the little openings are recessed and they have a really thick waxy or cuticle layer to keep that moisture inside. The leaves of conifers are uh, quite varied. Again, we've got different sizes of needles and those scale-like leaves, but not all conifers have leaves that are evergreen. This is a ball cypress, and just like a deciduous tree, it actually drops its leaves in the fall. So you can have a conifer that's not an evergreen. The uh, ball cypress, the dawn redwood, and just a few other conifer species will drop their leaves. The leaves of conifers don't stay on the trees forever. They last for several years, but they are eventually shed. And to know this is true, all you have to do is look at the ground underneath a pine or a juniper or another conifer, and you can see that they are littered with the leaves. So they eventually are replaced. The growth habit of conifer evergreen trees, or coniferous evergreen trees as they're usually called, is attractive in the landscape because they usually have a strong dominant leader and it gives the tree sort of a pointed look and uh, really blends well with the other trees in the landscape. Now there's a reason they have this shape. A lot of conifers are native to areas where they get a lot of snow up in the mountains and with that shape that helps them shed the heavy snow loads so they don't break a lot of their branches. Now conifers when they're planted in the landscape generally prefer full sun although if you have some really tall pecan trees you might give them a little bit of afternoon shade they would benefit from that and also some conifer species do well in Oklahoma but many of them actually don't perform all that well and you might expect from uh, trees that are native to areas where the weather is cool, where they get a lot of snow. You bring them here and we have our hot and humid summertime temperatures and the trees kind of struggle. And one of their biggest enemies is heavy wet clay soil. They are transpiring or respiring a lot because it is so hot and they need extra oxygen and clay soils by their nature don't have a lot of oxygen so it usually is a, a recipe for disaster if you plant one of these trees in a heavy clay soil. So if you have a bermed up area or a raised area somewhere where there's a little bit better drainage a conifer tree or shrub will generally perform a little bit better. Now another interesting characteristic about conifers is that they don't produce a lot of dormant buds, especially up into the foliage. And if I lift this limb up of the juniper here, you can see down inside there that uh, there's not really, not really any green growth. And if you were to maybe prune this branch way back here, that branch will die back to the trunk. There's not gonna be any new growth sprout out because they just don't produce very many of those dormant dormant buds. So if you're going to prune a conifer, always prune within the foliage. So uh, make sure there's some foliage beyond the cut back toward the main body of the plant. I see people do this from time to time 
maybe in a home where there's a, an arborvita or a juniper growing over a sidewalk and they'll come out and they'll just chop all those branches right at the edge of the sidewalk and it leaves a big hole in the plant because they don't have those dormant buds. They're not going to re-sprout like a, a holly or say a boxwood or something like that. Well, if you have room for another tree in your landscape, you might consider planting some sort of conifer to give your landscape some diversity. And if you watch our program in the month of April, we're going to feature an episode where we talk about different conifer species that perform well in Oklahoma.